This is the second generation of Australia's most popular medium-sized SUV, the Mazda CX-5. As you can see, it's got a much sharper exterior, both front and rear, and if we jump inside, the interior has also been vastly improved. But is that enough to maintain its number one position? Perhaps the first thing you'll notice when you jump inside is actually the very much improved interior. Everything from the aircon vents to the controls to the infotainment system has changed quite a lot. And that screen that used to be right in the middle here has actually been replaced by this floating 8 inch tablet style screen which I know a lot of other manufacturers have also been going for. You do unfortunately miss out on Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, as far as proprietary software goes for an infotainment system, Mazda's one is actually pretty good. So, while you may miss the mirroring system technologies, I don't really think it's much of a big deal. As with the previous car, the new CX-5 is very dynamically capable. It rides well, it handles well, and the steering communicates extremely well. So, it puts the sport in SUV. And if that means anything to you, I think you'll be quite impressed. One of the most prominent complaints about the old CX-5 was the amount of NVH, the amount of noise that was coming through the cabin from the road. Now, the Japanese company has certainly addressed that with the new car. In fact, it's saying now that at 100 kilometers an hour, the amount of noise coming inside the cabin is akin to 80 kilometers an hour for the previous car. And whilst we can't exactly measure that at this very moment, we do agree that it's a lot quieter in here. A lot quieter. I can certainly feel it driving it. But also, it's so much more refined. It's got a bit of a European feel to it now. In terms of practicality, it's quite hard to beat the CX-5. Now I've got a lot of storage compartments up here, including bottle holders. And then if you move to the second row, it's actually quite wide. So you can indeed fit two relatively large child seats and still have room left over. The boot has also been increased in size by about 40 liters. So if you've got one or two kids, even young ones that have a lot of stuff you need to carry, this is a really good sized car. In terms of active safety technologies, the whole range gets the likes of autonomous emergency braking and reversing camera and sensors. However, you do unfortunately have to spend around $50,000 for the top spec Akira to get all the fancy safety stuff like active cruise control and lane departure warning. Technologies that up until very recently were only seen in the likes of Mercedes, Audi and BMW. So while it may seem expensive, it's actually pretty good value for money. So. It drives better, it looks better, and it's far more refined than ever before. And some may say this all new update doesn't go far enough. They may say that it's a little bit too conservative. However, after having driven it for many kilometers, we believe the CX-5 remains one of the benchmarks in its class.